Greetings and welcome to this week's edition of Bring It On. My name's Bob Hayes and I'm going to be your host for today's show. We're dubbing this Election 24, 2024. During the interviews, we're going to try to get all the candidates for the select board's office or, and also for the school committee to come in and tell you where they sit with their different views. And we're hoping at some point to possibly even do a debate. So stay tuned and watch us. As I said, we want your input. And when I sign off, I'll explain to you how we're going to do it. Frank? Bob, nice to see you. You're a candidate for the Board of Selectmen. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? It's Frank Melissi, we know that, and it took me forever to figure out the last name. How yeah. many times did M I call you? Melissi. Melissi. Uh, even after all these years, yeah. Um, I so. called you Mills before. <laughs> it's Frank Melissi. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, my name is Frank Melissi. I'm running for, um, for the Board of Selectmen. Um, I moved to Hanson in 2014. Um, I have three kids in the school district. My wife, um, we love the town of Hanson. Um, I've been involved in town politics since 2021. Um, I am the uh, current chair of the Camp Kiwani Commission um, and also the current chair of the Capital Improvement Committee. Um, and I, ever since I got involved with Camp Kiwani and the chair of Camp Kiwani, I've absolutely um, loved um, helping the town with um, issues that they have in different commission, the committees that they have. So, Tell us about a little bit of achievements. I understand at the camp that there's been some work done and some good stuff, and this is all important stuff as to what you do, and the same thing with the other committee that you're on. Give us a brief yeah. summary of that. So I, 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 I tend to gravitate towards um, difficult situations when it comes to, um, when it comes to trying to fix something. Um, you know, when I first joined the Camp Kiwani Commission, um, they were $40,000 in debt, um, asking every, not every year, but most years, town meeting money of free cash. Um, they had a $120,000 budget. Um, the camp was in shambles, um, as, so to speak. Um, and when I got there, a month after I applied, but the first commission I've ever sat on in municipal government, actually, was actually pretty funny. And, and before I joined that commission, I never stepped foot on Camp Kiwani which was the craziest part about it, but I saw that we needed it for the Recreation Committee, and I went ahead and, and applied to it. A month after I applied to it, I actually got the chairmanship on that, which was a little daunting, I'm not going to lie. Um, and that was three years ago. Um, now, if you go look at the camp, you can see the progress that the commission has made. Um, we just redid the Cove last year. Um, our budget is now $364,000. Um, we have you know additional $120,000 in our retained earnings, or I'll quote and quote and say savings account. Um, we haven't asked the town meeting for money for free cash <coughs> for the last two years. Um, and I'm really, really proud of the work that the commission has done um, to, to get the camp up to par um, and, and bring the budget back so we're not putting the taxpayer burden um, for asking additional free cash for the camp. And we opened up the Cove program last year, again, for the first time that we were charging for Cove passes with lifeguards. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud about the work that the commission has done at the camp. And, um, you know, for the last three years, I've been the chairperson there. Um, I can only take a little bit of credit, but, um, but the direction of the camp is, is going up. <coughs> so it's really great. Awesome. Yeah. Well, sounds good. Well, now you're stepping into a different arena, and it's an elected position yeah. running, for, running for the Board of Selectmen. Yeah. And as you know, I know that you know what the responsibilities are. So we're going to talk about a few things. Where do you think the town of Hanson needs to go? We talk about the Main Street corridor in the town, and some people think it's from 58 to Tritown, which is back to 14. Some people think it's from High Street to the, just past the train tracks. But that's the area we're talking about, so everybody knows, is Main Street in Hanson. 1,000 Main Street, we'll say. Um, the old Landis house at the end of High Street mm -hmm. that's since been torn down and two um, residential buildings, partially residential and partially commercial on the first floors are going in down there. The old Cranberry Company is for sale. What What's your thoughts on that whole area of town? Um, so... That whole area of town, um, it, you know, it, it, it's kind of the historical heart of Hanson, right? You have the old cranberry factory that's there. Um, you have a lot of people who, who remember back in the day. Um, I wasn't here back in the day, but I hear stories about it, and people just light up about I it. I was. <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but, um, but, it, it, but it's an important piece of the community there. And, and the cranberry building coming up for sale, I hope, my hope for that cranberry building is that somebody will restore it bring it back to, you know, maybe put a, um, you know, maybe a distillery or a brewery in there, something something that will bring um, kind of a younger population into town. We need that younger population to come into town from the MBTA station standpoint to start 
bringing more revenue and tax revenue into the town. Um, there, there's great opportunity with the with the High Street Park Committee to bridge the MBTA area, which I'm considering that as the main street right now, essentially from Moe's um, down to, I'll say the police station is, is what yeah. I'll kind of focus on. Yes. Um, there's great opportunity to add um, sidewalks up into the High Street Park and have that kind of be the center of town. Um, we need to get in a position where we're not overdeveloping the town, but we can bring in new families here who have generations of, of tax um, levy that can go back into the town and, and help support the schools and get us out of situations like hold harmless and things like that. So um, we have a great economic development committee that's focused mainly on that, that stretch of land right there. Um, and, and I am not a micromanager. They're doing a great job with coming up with ideas and grants. Um, and that is why the select board um, appoints people to committees is to do that work. Um, I'm in support of what they're doing. I think it's a fabulous idea. Um, there's definitely improvements that need to be made, but um, those improvements will come over a long period of time. It's not gonna be over my three year term if I get elected or even if I re ran for another three year term, it's probably gonna be in a decade that we'll see that start to really start to sprout up and have the fruits of what we're sowing right now actually start to show. Well, it's kind of a two-prong or a three-prong question that I'm going to lead you into. For this. Yeah. There's people in town, whether we call it Facebook warriors or just normal people that say, yeah. stop the building. We want you to stop the building. And I'm assuming that they're talking about the Zoning Board of Appeals or they're talking about the Select Board. Stop the building. Stop, stop, stop. We love the small town right. atmosphere. What do, you, what, do you, what do you think about that? I, I don't necessarily disagree. I think that, you know, the building needs to be take every building that we bring up in town that that's not a single family house or a double family house or, or you know, that has condos or apartments has to be thought through and considered very carefully. Um, you don't want to get into a situation where our town is over overpopulated and our resources are strained or we have to, you know, worse, we have to start taking conservation land and it, you know I, I don't want to get into a situation like that um, but we also have a board for that we have a planning board we have you know we have a zoning board of appeals that's supposed to be you know forwarding you know uh, taking all of that into consideration when they make their decisions um, I am for moderate growth into the town of Hanson I do not want to turn this into um, you know like uh, for example I'll say Whitman is one of our neighboring towns that has a lot of different uh, complexes like that or like a Marshfield um, I, I want us to stay the small town of Hanson that we are but we still need families to come in that are younger to give that generational tax levy onto the town so we can still continue to keep our taxes low and also have generations of, of people coming up and supporting the schools, the fire, the police, and coming back to Hanson when they have kids. Um, so we can continue on with the, with the growth of Hanson, um, not in an astronomical way. I don't want to see us be 15 or 20,000 people. I think 11,000 people is enough for us. Um, and I think if we can sustain that and have people come back to the town, um, it'd be even better. Well, there's another prong on this question. There always I'm is. Ask you. There always, <laughs> there is, always is. Okay. There's, as you know, Mara Healy, the current governor, <clears throat> has proposed this, and I'm probably going to ruin the term, but the MP, MBTA zone. And yes. there's, there's talk about the 750 units being built on a 15-acre parcel or what have you. You know, yes. th there's a lot of confusion and a lot of people are really scared about the T turning that part of Hanson into a small city. What's your thoughts? How do you feel about it? And where do you think it could be going? As I understand, there is redistricting that needs to be done. So could you speak a little bit about that? I'm not, I'm asking you. Yeah, so, so I actually attended a couple meetings from the planning board about this. They've been working on this for the past year and a half um, and trying to get this, this zone created. Um, from my understanding of the MBTA bylaw um, or, or the zoning bylaw that they have, they would like any community or adjacent community that has an MBTA station um, to have a zoning, a, a zone created within, I believe it's a half a mile to a mile of the MBTA station, um, as a, a high dense residential area. The planning board came up with an idea to use an existing parcel of land next to the MBTA station um, that would be this zoning area. Um, and everybody thinks that um, they would be able to build 750 acre or 750 units, excuse me, on that land. Um, I looked at the map. I talked to the town planner. Um, I talked to the planning board when I attended their meetings. Um, that land is currently <laughs> owned by a developer. Um, it's been privately owned, owned. privately owned by a developer. Okay. Um, it's been owned privately by a developer since the 80s, um, and that developer has not built that land. Um, 
I am not in favor of the state coming in saying you have to do something with, with you know, if, especially if town meeting votes against it or the citizens don't want it, or the state managing, um, you know, Hanson's zoning restrictions. That that that's something that's a clear government overreach of what they're trying to do, um, and they're being fought in court about that. Um, they're going to the Supreme Court. Milton is fighting them with it. I think um, uh, Winthrop is also fighting them, um, and that will play out in court. Um, what I don't want to see is people think that there's going to be 750 units built on that parcel of land. Um, there is probably a reason that that developer has not built on that land yet since the 80s. There's been plenty of opportunities for that developer to build on that land by going to the Zoning Board of Appeals or the Planning Board, um, and they have not done it. Is From, there currently, not to interrupt you, but is there currently anything in the pipeline, and that's what I'm saying, have, has this developer come forward to the Planning Board or anywhere and made any attempt to do anything? I checked, and no, I have not seen anything that that developer has come forward to the planning board, um, at least in the last, you know, probably 10 years when I when I looked into it, um, to, to build anything on that land. The planning board, I think, is taking a smart approach to this. They're taking a piece of land that can already be developed by that private landowner's right as owning that piece of land. Um, no town should also be able to take that away from them. Um, and and districting that as the, as the requirement for the state. Um, the state came out and strong-armed the communities by saying, if you do not comply with this, we will take away your grants. The town of Hanson is not in the financial predicament that it's in. You know, it, it's, it's, not in it's not in the financial interest of the town of Hanson to give away money to the state <clears throat> because of a bylaw that is going to be fought in court, and the court will decide whether it is, it is legal or it's not legal. If it's not legal and we pass this bylaw, we can, at the next town meeting, repeal the bylaw. <laughs> it's, just, it's that simple. Um, we do not have the extra cash right now to be giving up. Um, you know, in the last year, we got $500,000 in one-stop grants. Um, we do not, we're not in the financial position in Hanson to give up that money um, because of a bylaw on a piece of land that's already privately owned and it can already be developed. I think the planning board is actually doing the town of Hanson a favor. They've looked into this. They're the experts on this. Um, we trust them. There's five people on that board, from my understanding, um, and what they do is they look at that, and all five members approved it to go to the um, town meeting, from my understanding. From what I understand, and correct me <clears throat> if I'm wrong, if the land is designated, as you said, to that zone, it kind of backs off the governor because they yes. want something designated, not that does not give a guarantee to build it. Am exactly. I correct? Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. All you need to do is create the zone. Okay. You do not need to build the zone. You do not need to have the zone buildable from what the current statues is. All you need to do is create the zone. If you had a zone there that had land that you could not build on because it's wetland or something along those lines, that is not in the current bylaw or the current law from what the town planner has told me. Um, that is... Um, you just have to create the zone, and then automatically you are compliant with the MBTA law, and you are eligible for those grants. Um, we have a lot of important projects coming up in town that we need those grants for, one of which is the library. The library just is, is doing a study. They're doing a feasibility study on creating a new library. They will not be eligible for that grant if we do not pass this by law in town. Um, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of a lot of risk for, um, for, for, you know, for not much reward for not passing the bylaw in my eyes. Hearing this, and I've heard pieces of it, and I've seen some of it on the internet, we're going to go to that next, but mm -hmm. this could be something that's 10, 15, 20 years away from being done. Did, am I correct? Or is every town got to comply immediately? Or So so actually, every town has to create the bylaw. So there's, there's, two different, there's two different levels of this bylaw. There is a rapid transit bylaw, which every town who was within that commute, within that that jurisdiction had to be compliant by um, December 31st of 2023. That is why you're now seeing a lawsuit with Milton um, because they are one of those rapid transit uh, communities. Okay, um, sure. And the commuter rail stations has to be compliant by uh, the end of the year in fiscal, uh, in, I'm sorry, in year 24. Okay. So we have until 2024, December 2024 to um, enact the bylaw. If it's not enacted, um, we're open to legal um, repercussions from the state of Massachusetts, which will also cost the taxpayers of this town hundreds of thousands of dollars, I would imagine. Um. Okay, well, we, we discussed a little bit of talking about Facebook, and Facebook seems to be, it's turned into a, a, a entity of its own about with town politics. <laughs> yeah, it everybody is. Everybody seems to get into this Facebook thing, and, and they, there's a lot of misinformation that people run with. Yeah. 
and it's making it probably a little bit difficult for the founding, fa the, the, the fathers, the, the select board, um, all of these boards to move forward because there's so many different things that have played out. What's your opinion on some of the, of playing it out? Should it, be, should it be done at town meeting? Should it be done at the select board? A lot of it gets played out on the internet and there's misinformation out there big time. I mean, How do we yeah. cure that? I mean, a, a lot, so, so <clears throat> Facebook and social media in general is, is a great place for a public forum, right? You get to have a sense of people feel protected when they're behind their keyboard, right? They feel like, you know, they don't have to get face-to-face -face confrontation with somebody. Sure. So they, they can let their opinions flow a little bit more than, than you know, they would, um, you know, if, if they were at a select board meeting or at a planning board meeting. So all of that is is still useful. It's all useful information. If you have people who have that, that, that feeling in town that feel like, you know, this law or that law or this subject is, is going to detrimentally affect them, um, they should go to a public meeting and ask about that because those are the people that are making the decisions that you elected to make the decisions. Um, you know, I, you know, over the past uh, month, I've been, you know, I've been running my campaign for selectmen and I've been doing it a lot on Facebook. I've been putting out information on Facebook. You will have people there who are, um, who are naysayers, right? And, and, and that is completely fine. Like that is, it, there is no problem with that. That is their first amendment right to, to sure. you know, say I understand. this person, I don't like this person because of this or something like that. Yeah, it wouldn't be the first um, time any of us have been criticized. <laughs> it definitely wouldn't it be the first. Be the last. It, it would absolutely will not, will not be the last, you know? But um, I've been criticized since I started getting into municipal government in the first place. Um, I am not somebody who sits back and just, um, just lets it happen, right? If, if somebody is gonna criticize me, um, that's fine, I completely accept that, but I will shake your hand when I see you. I'll say, my name is Frank Melisi, what can I help you with? Like, is there something that I can explain to you better, maybe so you can understand my position? Um, I'm not changing positions just because I talk to people. Um, that would be untangible, right? Um, um, but what I will say is, um, I am not somebody who just sits back and, you know, lets people, let, let people um, say, whatever they want about me or my family, right? I'll, I'll ask you what the problem is and if I can help you fix the problem, right? Um, and that's that's kind of what I am. If you want a selectman who sits back and doesn't move forward with an issue, um, I'm probably not your voter. <laughs> I'm, I'm not your guy. So um, I, I take things head on. I've done it since I went to the Camp Kiwani. I've done it since I went to the Capital Improvement. Um, I am, I'm very persistent with what I do. Um, my opinions change all the time based on new information that comes out. I'm not a hardline person. I'm not somebody who says, this is the way it is, it has to be this way, or else I'm not gonna agree to it. Um, if somebody gives me information that I don't know about, or if somebody, you know, if, if there is a, if there is a you know, information that changes for an override, for example, that I'm sure we're gonna talk we're about. We're gonna get into that. <laughs> like, I'm sure we're gonna talk about that. Um, you know, that, that is, it's not as black and white as yes or no. Town politics and, and every situation is not, I've never had a situation that was as black as white as yes or no. Um, every piece of information needs to be gathered and collected so they can go ahead and make an informed decision about it. That's what I do. Um, I, I'm, you know, yeah. So that was a long-winded answer. I'm That's sorry. That's all right. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Another issue in, in town, and in, in all of these issues affect what goes on in town, we have 8,000 voters in the town of Hanson. Yes. And we have trouble getting a quorum of 100 or 125 or what. I know they've changed the quorum sometimes. It's a moving target. How, in your mind, do you see any way to get people more engaged? Because it seems like the more, I mean, two of the biggest town meetings that have happened in Whitman, I mean, in Hanson, I, I, I was going to say Whitman Hanson, but in Hanson, where one was to do with an override and one was to do with building a school. Yes. And one of them was outside during COVID. Yes. And one of them was uh, in the Farming Arts Center. I think we had six or 700 people, which was wonderful. Mm -hmm. So few people are making so many decisions in town for the abundant amount of people. And then after it's made, people get second guessing about what it should be, but they yes. didn't come to town meeting. Like a lot of people will say to me, I was at town meeting and I've been going for probably 30 years. And you can check a list. You can go to town meeting and see who came and who didn't. Yeah. And they didn't come. How do we overcome that? Do you have any ideas? I know this is a very tough question because... <laughs> I've asked a bunch of people and it's tough. So it's actually it's actually funny because one thing I did, um, I believe it was two years ago, is I started a citizen's petition to move town meeting um, up from, I believe it was at seven o'clock. I wanted to move it up to be 6.30. Um, and there was two reasons I did that. I actually I actually talked to, I was at the select board meeting. I talked to Mr. Hickey about this because he was kind of asking me why, um, you know, why I was doing it. Um, 
people with children, with young children, um, don't want to be at town meeting until 11 o'clock. They, they, it's just, or they don't want to be at town meeting until 10 o'clock. They have children. I don't want to be there until 10 o'clock. My kids are long I, gone. I, I have no problem with that. I like town meeting. I think town, meet, town meeting is, is, the, is the melting pot of democracy, right? That is where all the decisions are made. You can change the whole town just by going to a town meeting. It's exciting for me. Um, but also, you know, younger families don't want to be there until 10 o'clock. And the older community doesn't want to be there until 10 o'clock. So, um, you know, pushing that town meeting forward by 30 minutes um, actually increased. I, I, I went back and I saw the, the quorum actually was increased. It's not by you know 300 people, but it's by you know a substantial margin, right? Um, you know, a, a good margin. The more people you get in town meeting, the better town meeting is going to be. Of course it is. Um, and and you know that's one idea that I that I had and I executed on. Um, like like I said before, I'm not the type of person who just comes up with an idea and then sits back on it, right? I come up with an idea and I see how it is to execute and then I I move forward with it. If it's unfeasible. And then it's Try unfeasible. Something else. Try something else. And I, I have a very public record of, of my accomplishments in town and then also some of my failures, right? And that's completely fine. So, um, but, you know, town meeting, it, it calls for engagement. People need to know that their voice actually matters at town meeting. Um, they need to know that the voice is going to be respected at town meeting. Um, they need to know how town meeting works. It's intimidating. Going to town meeting and having to hold up your hand sometimes, you know, when, when people and your friends seen you vote, right? It, it, it can get intimidating. But that is where the decisions are made, and that is the, the root of all democracy. I believe is that town meeting, and and it will. I hope it stays in the town of Hanson forever. I hope. I, I wish every town had it and every city had it, um, but you know that. Well, you're not going to believe it. We're getting a little bit ready to be at the end of this group, so now we're going to yeah. come up with the white elephant in the room, and it's the schools. <laughs> okay. The schools. We talk override. There's been yep. tremendous amounts of. Yeah, pro override, no override. This has gone on for years. Yep. What's your opinion on that? You know that the school budget's $63 million. I'm sure that yep. you do. You know that every year it goes up. I mean, it, it's inevitable. If you have a payroll of 30 to 30, $30 million and it's a 2 year, two or 3% contract, it automatically is going to go up 2 yep. to 3% next year. It's very, very accurate to see what it's going to do. And then if you look at your own bills and heat goes up and electricity goes up and it goes up at a 2% rate, you can almost see what it's going to go up. Yeah. Override, no override, I'm not, discuss schools. What do yeah. you think with that? Because it, it's a hot topic. It's, it's big money. It affects every household. People are passionate on both sides. Mm -hmm. Let us let, yeah. let them know where so, you're going to. So, say. so I have three kids in the school district, <clears throat> right? And um, they're they're awesome. Like, and then this, the Whitman Hanson Regional School District is a top tier education for the money that we pay for it. Um, the problem that I particularly have with the situation that we're in with the schools right now is it seems like nobody wants to talk to each other. The school committee does not take into consideration not only Hanson but Whitman as well, their financial situation. Um, the meeting that they had, we're, I'm dating the show a little bit right now, so I don't want to get Oh, I don't care. Out, That's okay. <laughs> okay. So the, the meeting that they had, um, I believe it was uh, two weeks ago, um, where they certified the school budget at a 10%, I believe it was 10.2% assessment to the town of Hanson. I think you're correct. Um, and that was, um, they did not take a penny out of that school budget. Not a penny. And, and I am all for you know, um, children having support in school. I'm all for children having counselors and things like that. But there has to be a certain situation where those counselors, um, chances are if you're in the Whitman Hanson Regional School District, and this is, I'm going to make a broad comment here, is, is you have health insurance. The, you should take your child to a, you know, a doctor outside of school. It's not necessarily the school's responsibility to give full mental health assessments to children that are there. And, the, and during COVID, it, it was an interesting situation. They got one-time money. They used the one-time money for what they thought was the right way, completely fine. And then they should have known that the state would have dropped them. Um, the state dropped that one-time money. They always do. And they, they sold them it was going to be one-time money. And instead of building that into their budget um, you know, for the last three years, um, they decided to drop the burden on the town. Um, that's a decision that they're elected to do. The school committee is elected to, to make that decision. Do I agree with it? No. I think they should have worked with the towns better. Um, I think that they sh they absolutely could have cut something from that budget instead of you know just assessing in almost in protest the full amount. Even though Jeff, the superintendent, gave them multiple options and said, "Hey, we can give them you know a th uh, there would be you know a three hundred thousand dollar it would be a three hundred thousand dollar override if they went with this number or it would be you know um, they." So there, were options. there were there were absolutely other options at that meeting um, and and they decided not to do that I want my kids to have the best education humanly possible um, I want my kids to um, you know grow up with every opportunity in life but 
a, a well-rounded child is not built off of just well-funded schools. It's built off of safe roads, it's built off of crime-free streets, and it's built off of a good family foundation structure. Um, so yes, they should be funded, but they can't, it can't be at the, dispense, at the expense of all the other departments in town. Um, that is very selfish for the school community to do that. Um, I support the school committee, don't get me wrong, but I disagree with how they did it. So if the override goes to the ballot right now um, at a $750,000 override, I would not support that because they didn't try to cut it. If it was a $300,000 override that they had to cut you know, a couple positions for or find some fat in the budget, um, I'd be more opt to support that. But at this moment, I support the override going to the ballot because that's the democratic process and how it should go and people should have their voice in that because there is people in town who want that override to pass. But I do not support that override at the moment because they did not cut it. That kind of lets people know where you stand. That, that's exactly where I stand. <laughs> and, and, and yeah. That's, that's, everybody's entitled to their opinion and that's why we're doing this show to let people know, let the voter know who is Frank. Yeah, and, and, and that, and like I said before early in the show, that can change. You know, if the school committee comes back and says, listen, you know, we're going to bring this assessment from the 10.2 down to the 7.6 and we're going to do then that, you know, depending on where they're cutting, that can change. Right. Because all the information that you get, it's always fluid in town government. Right. So there's no drop. The, the drop dead date hasn't come yet. It has not come yet. So the board of selectmen has a meeting on Tuesday about this. They have a meeting on the next Tuesday about this. It needs to be the town clerk by the 12th, I believe, before it actually be, gets on the ballot. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of information there. But as the, as the override currently stands, I support it going to the ballot, but I, I do not support the override. Okay. Well, you're not going to believe it, but we're almost out of time here. Frank, I want you to look into the camera and tell the <laughs> citizens of Hanson why they should vote for Frank Melissa. Yeah. Uh, so um, first off, I'm honored to even be in this spot, right? So... Um, I just want to let everybody know that, um, you know, I'm Frank Belisi. Um, there has been people who don't like me for some of the accomplishments that I've done in town. Um, that's completely fine. Um, you sh can get a better picture about me by asking me about, um, you know, my opinions. Um, if they agree, if you agree with them, that's completely fine. I'll be honored to have you vote on the 18th in Hanson. Um, if not, um, hopefully we can just have a civil discussion about it. Uh, if you want to know more about me, the best information about Frank Melisi is from myself. I'm happy to meet with anybody, either email, phone call, we go grab a coffee at Sandy's. Um, if you want to see some of the stuff that I've done in town, um, go take a look at Camp Kiwani. Um, you know, whether I win this election or I don't win this election, um, I'm going to be at Camp Kiwani either way. Um, I love it. Um, it's been great. And if you want somebody who is going to fight for Hanson and, you know, say what's on my mind and, and be, you know, be the, the best selectman that I could possibly be, um, I, that's what I do. If I didn't put my full heart into it, I wouldn't be doing it. So um, I would be honored to have you vote on May 18th. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, reach out to me. I'm on Facebook, uh, Frank Melisi for Select, um, for select Board, um, or you can email me at frank.melisi.selectboard at gmail.com, and I'll be happy to um, catch up with anybody. So, All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, I hope today's Bring It On has given you a snapshot of what Frank is all about. He was pretty candid about what he does and what he plans to do and what he likes in Hanson and what he dislikes in Hanson. If you have anything that you would like me to ask any of the candidates or you have any suggestions or any questions, you can contact me directly at bobhayes4433 at gmail.com or you can call me on my cell phone at 617-538-0189. We are doing these shows for you. I think everyone, Whitman Hanson Community Access included, wants to make a better Hanson and a better Whitman. So thank you for watching. We're going to continue on. I'm going to be interviewing candidates for the school committee in Hanson. There's going to be other interviews for people in Whitman that are running for elected offices. So again, don't be shy. Come, get engaged, call me, email me. If you look at uh, Whitman Hanson Community Access website, it's fantastic. You'll get a tremendous amount of knowledge. Go to WHCA TV and you will see a whole bunch of stuff that you can be proactive with. They're doing a great job. Thank you for watching and we'll be back.